Yes, Jackie, today's Twitter talk is all about this NFL star right here. Reggie Bush has been trending on Twitter since the first quarter of yesterday's game. His 133 yards and two touchdowns helped the Miami Dolphins earn a much needed win against the Oakland Raiders. Sports fan and NBC6 South Florida follower Erica Meadow had this to say on Twitter. She wrote, three cheers for Reggie Bush, two for the touchdowns and one for the win, hashtag Dolphins. Ryan Adams tweeted, let's hope we learn from Reggie Bush and keep up the good work. And yes, Ryan, I'm sure Finns fans everywhere couldn't agree with you more. The Miami Dolphins are set to play the Denver Broncos next Sunday at home, but if football's not your cup of tea, how about a glass of wine? The South Beach Food and Wine Festival kicks off this Saturday. It's a four-day tasting event hosted by world-renowned chefs. You've seen their faces on TV, and now you'll get to taste their food. And if you're more of an adrenaline junkie, be sure to check out the Warrior Dash in Hialeah this Sunday. The four mile run is a rough and tough race that features obstacles sure to challenge you. Registration is 65 bucks through midnight tonight. For more upcoming events in a full community calendar, don't forget to check out our entertainment guide on NBC6.com. Thousands of movie fanatics were at the screening of Paranormal Activity 4 in Miami last weekend. Here's photos NBC6 viewer Greg Martinez sent us. He was lucky enough to get a sneak peek of the movie and said it was the best of the series. And remember, don't forget to email your weekend photos to IC at NBC6.com if you'd like a chance to see your party pics on TV2. Live in the studio, I'm Karen Franklin with today's Twitter Talk. This is the vehicle that police say the mother left her three children unattended inside. Three hours went by before anyone noticed the kids in the car. Too late for that three-month-old baby. Right now, traffic is flowing freely, but at midnight tonight, FDOT plans to shut down this road, leaving commuters with only one way into downtown. Seven tombs have been desecrated at Lincoln Memorial Park Cemetery in Miami's Alapata neighborhood on Tuesday. The breaking in and stealing of the body parts is something manager Ellen Johnson said she has seen before. Grave had been desecrated, which is nothing unusual. They've been desecrating graves in the black community for the last three or four years. A total of seven small crypts have been opened. Four adult crypts had holes punched into them. Frustrating for the family members of the deceased. I think it's wrong. Diva for someone to do that to a person. You think they're gonna die, they're gonna die and, and live in peace or uh, stay in peace anyway? Workers arrived this morning to cement the smaller crypts. Miami-Dade police and the medical examiner were also on scene collecting evidence. Because this area is so close to sea level, the crypts are above ground. Authorities say that's easy access for Santeria worshipers who need the body parts for their ceremonies. Black. Body parts, bones are more easier or better or more religious uh, and can do more with them than they can out the other color uh, people's bones. Johnson called the crime evil and disgusting. She said something needed to be done about the religious practice. Roy Williams came to the cemetery to check on his mother whose tomb he found was undisturbed. This is outrageous. Yeah. You know, this is kind of hard on families when body parts are being taken. So I'm going to see if I can arrange to get my mother moved somewhere else. Michael Brewer sat in a Broward County courtroom today facing the teenagers who set him on fire in 2009 at a Deerfield Beach apartment complex. His grandmother Maureen made an emotional plea to the judge during the sentencing speaking about Michael's long and painful recovery. It's a million times worse than a shot to the head, then you're dead. He wasn't. He lived through it all, thank God. But it was awful. Jesus Mendez, who threw the lighter onto Michael, received 11 years in prison and 19 years probation. Denver Jarvis was sentenced to eight years in prison and 22 years probation. I think they should get longer, but it's, it's all right. I know they're going to mess up anyways. The third teenager, Matthew Bent, will take his case to trial in March. Having to come back time and time again, you know, you have to reopen all these wounds. And the nightmares come back and, uh, you know, the feelings come back and it's, it's really difficult. Defense attorneys for the boys claimed that it was a childhood prank gone wrong. 
Michael disagrees. They knew exactly what they're doing and it doesn't mean anything how old they are and how young they are. Back in 2009, police say the three boys confronted Michael about a video game and a bicycle. The boys set him on fire and Michael jumped over a fence into this swimming pool to save himself. He suffered burns to over 60% of his body. Nobody helped my grandson. Had he not jumped a fence and dove into a pool, he would have melted on the ground there. It's very difficult to feel satisfied when you have, you know, young people's lives who have been derailed and another young man who's going to suffer the consequences of those young people's uh, actions forever. Michael Brewer and his family will relive the time next month when Matthew Bent goes to trial. The two teenagers who are sentenced today will be testifying against him. I'm Karen Franklin, NBC4 Lauderdale. I have no idea, I mean, I, I, uh, no idea who, who wants me, what team wants me. We can answer that, Peyton. The Miami Dolphins want you. Their fans are desperate for a future Hall of Famer to take over the team. We ran into these Dolphins fans today at the Titanic Brewery. Well, we were talking about how boring the Dolphins have been the last few years, and we were hoping that Manny at least be a little bit more exciting and bring some excitement back to uh, the Dolphin football. It's worth a gamble. We need anything we can get at this point. Manning is a four-time MVP. A Super Bowl champion, but he is coming off a devastating injury and is at the tail end of his career. Desmond Howard is a Heisman Trophy winner and football analyst for ESPN. You know, he's damaged goods at this point, and no one really knows um, the extent of the damage. Uh, so I think for the casual fan, oh, it's great. We're getting Peyton Manning. This is an upgrade from anything we've had since Dan Marino. Speaking of Marino, we asked him about the likelihood of Peyton coming to Miami. Oh, um, I think there's a good chance that that might happen. Pierre Garçon was one of Manning's favorite receivers with the Colts. Um, I know he likes the weather here in Miami, but I have no idea where he's going to go. Omar Kelly covers the Dolphins for the Sun Sentinel. From a marketing standpoint, from a ticket sales standpoint, from a community excitement standpoint, there is no option better than Peyton Manning. 